Good evening, everyone. Welcome Hello, to another everyone. Welcome to another one of our webinars. As you guys know, we have these once a month and we talk about all sorts of different topics related to ag, sustainability, advocating, growing your business. And so tonight's webinar is actually about scaling and growing your business. We're going to be talking about ways that we've scaled and grown our business, the things that we've had to outsource. And what I want to start us off with, though, is I want to start talking with both of us. Natalie and I have pivotal moments in our business where we felt like it like changed the trajectory of our businesses, our lives, our careers. And so I want to start with Natalie, you sharing what some of those moments have been for you. And then I'll share a couple of mine. Yeah, I think when, honestly, when I think when we were brainstorming this or, you know, deciding what we wanted to talk about, we both kind of agreed that we had similar almost points, right? We, we considered outsourcing as one that changed like the trajectory, helped us grow. Um, obviously investing in ourselves was another one. And then I feel like, what was the third outsourcing? No, I said outsourcing. So outsourcing, um, well, let's, I guess, focus on those two first. Okay. Um, so we can talk, uh, maybe let's dive into first, um, which is another reason, uh, why we want, we chose this topic. Cause I feel like, um, for anyone who we haven't, we've talked a little bit about on social, but not a ton, but Tara and I are actually in our own mastermind right now. Um, and we're launching, um, an elevate mastermind. And so I feel like it's kind of that investing in ourselves and scaling and growing has kind of been on our mind just because we've been, um, creating the outline for our in-person, uh, summit mastermind. And that's really focusing on exactly this conversation, like how to grow our businesses, how to scale. Um, we want to gather the, so if everyone hasn't, we've talked about it on our podcast. We have commercials for it and we've sent out some emails, but for anyone who isn't familiar with the summit mastermind, um, it's at the end of August and it is going to be the smallest teaching set guitar and I've ever done. It's going to be just 10 women max. Um, and it is going to be two days and it is going to cover, you have to be monetizing already. Um, and so it's going to cover how to basically go to the next level. Um, which I would say Tara and I consider the mastermind that we're currently in um, was really pivotal for, we've been doing a lot of brainstorming for Elevate with it. Um, and I think looking at our business for Elevate, that's why I would say that masterminds are investing in ourselves is one of the reasons why I consider that um, what has been pivotal moments for me that have helped me grow is because um, I invested in a social media retreat for my personal business. And I feel like that really took me to the next level for brand partnerships and just really how I visualize the Instagram app and how I wanted to show up and what I wanted to share and kind of just set me on the trajectory um, for truly that next level of Instagram. And then I would consider this mastermind that Tara and I are doing for Elevate what has really set us up extremely well um, to launch everything we have with Elevate because we really started Elevate I mean, it hasn't even been a full year. We were at in talk of it, um, you know, the end of summer, fall, but I feel like we have um, strategically been able to implement a lot of the, you know, launch. We learned a lot about launching. We, we just learned so much. And I really um, attribute some of that mastermind conversation to it. So looking back on the times I invested in myself, whether like I said, it was the social media retreat. Um, I did take an online course once before too, that I feel like really helped me with beginning brand partnerships. Um, but really it was the two in-person things we've done. The, for me, this um, Suzy school that I did for my personal and then this mastermind that we did for Elevate that really, I feel like, um, I mean, I've, I've talked about this so much with Rural Rooted and stuff, but I just, there's power in gathering like-minded women together um, to build our businesses. And so we're really excited for, sorry to go back to the summit again, but I'm so excited for it. I'm so excited for it. Sorry, my, my screen said frozen um, because it is the smallest we've ever done. 10 women, um, you know, most of my real rooted are like 18 to 20 women. And so we're, we're chopping that in half so that we can really give one-on-one. -on -one. And so um, I'm just excited for the summit. But Tara, maybe you, cause I've been talking this whole time. Maybe you wanna <laughs> talk about um, what, how, what like investing in yourself has looked like and why you've considered that to be, um, you know helping you grow um, and further your businesses. Yeah. So the first time I really invested in myself was I did an online class about pitching and it was the first time I really realized like you could pitch a brand. And I mean, I probably took that like five years ago. 
And I started sending emails out and pitching to brands to do brand partnerships, pitching. I even used it to pitch speaking engagements. I used it for all sorts of things. Then the second time I really invested in my business was when I took Rural Rooted. And I'll echo what you said. Like, it's just really powerful to be in a room with people just getting ideas. Like, I think that's what's crazy about masterminds is it's not even just the coaches. It's the entire group of like women working together, working through their businesses. So Rural Rooted, I showed up with like kind, I was kind of monetizing, but I wasn't like ready. I, I was like ready to be like, okay, I'm all in. I'm going to do this as a business. And so that was huge. That was a pivotal moment. Like I quit my job when I got back from Rural Rooted, went all in on, you know, New Mexico Milk, made my own consulting. Then from there, um, we took a course. I took a course on my blog, like how to better understand blogging. I wish I had taken it years ago. I highly regretted that I hadn't invested myself sooner considering I started with my blog six years ago. The fact that like just in the last eight months, I've taken a blog course really has me kicking myself. Um, and then we also took you and I took a course on how to an online course on how to launch a course. <laughs> and that was extremely valuable for mm -hmm. Elevate Ag. Um, and then finally, starting in January, we started this mastermind that we're currently in and have been in for the last six months. And that one has been so different because we already have a business going, like we both were generating incomes and we were ready to really like launch. I mean, Elevate was new, but we were already kind of in this space. We were just ready to like accelerate our growth. And I 100% attribute like that mastermind to like us just spending X amount of time every single week, every single month to really just like grow our business, focus on our business. And I know that's why I'm excited. Kind of like what you said about elevate the summit. That's going to be at the end of August is because there is just, there's just something magical about getting in a room with other business owners. And this one I'm really excited about because similar to the one that we're currently in, like it's people already in business and ready to like scale and just really like push themselves to that next level. Um, and so I'm excited to see not only like what, all, what all the, all the women get out of it, but I just feel like I get so much energy from those rooms and sharing and interacting. Um, and so I will put, if you want more information about the summit, you can go to our website, uh, elevateyouragstory.com. There is a like spot for the summit and you can apply to be a part of that. And so I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, those are my well, big things. I actually, I'm glad you mentioned um, the blogging course because I took a blogging course too when I started, um, wanted to start when I thought I was going to start blogging, um, <laughs> dabbled in it. Um, and then we took a podcasting course and we started the podcast. Oh yeah. Um, and it reminded me that I was giving advice to someone the other day that I told them ever since I invested in myself with that first social media retreat, um, seeing how like, yes, I could have struggled um, and figured probably all of what I learned at that retreat on my own eventually through, you know, whether it was listening to a podcast or reading a book or like doing all the hard work myself. Um, but it, they just like the investments just take what you want. Um, and I found have just like made it quicker for me. Yeah. Um, they've given me the information quicker. They've cut down my timeline. They've like weeded out the do's and don'ts. And so that I basically, ever since I invested in that first one, anytime I started something new, I've been like, it's worth it for the investment. So I'm glad you reminded me of that because I was telling someone the other day, I was like, if there's one thing you can do again, um, if you can get in the retreat, like in the room retreats, I always recommend it, but even just like the online courses or that, I mean, that's why we did elevate ag, but like investment doesn't always have to be huge, but anytime you can invest back into yourself, it, I just feel like when I have done that, it has like grown my business so much quicker. Like, I feel like we started the podcast off properly because we did the podcast course. We I feel like we had a better understanding of how to launch Elevate Ag, the course, because we took a course on how to launch a course. And so I'm glad you reminded me of that because again, like the pitching, the blogging, like the blogging course helped me for the time that I was blogging. It helped me really understand and just do it right from the beginning. Um, so I'm glad you reminded me that I've taken like a ton of other courses besides just the two big ones that I talked about. I know I was, you reminded me of one too. I actually took Sarah Haydenfeldt's um, iPhone oh, course. Yeah that I think it's like, not, I don't, it's like a hundred dollars or I don't know what it is right now, but I got it when it was like on special at Christmas for a hundred dollars. And it has like changed the way I operate my camera on my iPhone. It was absolutely worth all $100 without a doubt um, because of the things I learned. So it can be small things that you yeah. just don't, like you said, you don't have to suffer through things. You can just have someone teach you that already knows. And then you're just that much further ahead. Like there is no prize for like trying to figure out things on your own and making yeah. yourself crazy for days, weeks, months, whatever it is. And I think for 
elevate the course. Like if we hadn't taken this mastermind, I think we would have suffered a lot longer. It would have put our launch that much further out. I don't think we would have had as successful of a launch. Like it really has like paid for itself by attending, attending in person or doing online ones. And I mean, I don't want to say it was all just them like the mastermind. I mean, we showed up, we came knowing what we wanted to work on. And so, and then that's what I believe in the power. And that's why I'm excited, like to kind of hone down this summit into just the 10 women who are like at a certain place and looking for something similar, because, um, I think that was part of what has helped us so much with elevate is like, okay, we both knew what we wanted to do. And then we just had like really powerful, like core time devoted to it. And I think, like you said, I think we still, would have done everything we've done in Elevate. I just don't think we would have done it as quickly or successfully. Like we would have just learned from our own mistakes instead of getting like guidance. And um, I don't know, I'm just looking back. I know we were both so nervous to sign up for that mastermind. We're like, are you doing it? I was like, are you hitting, are you sure you're hitting submit? And you were like, yeah, I am. Are, are you, are you hitting it? Um, Cause it was a lot of money for us. It was a lot of money for us. Um, but looking back now, I'm so glad we did it. Cause I keep thinking like, I know we wouldn't have been on the the path we are now. So uh, one other thing I'll mention about that mastermind is also the women we met, which I I know we touched on that briefly, but like the connections we made in that room, like I still talk, like I have a meeting on Wednesday with one of the girls we had from that mastermind. Um, so the value of like your network is your net worth also is so helpful. And just being able to hear what their businesses were, like it was incredibly valuable. Okay. So uh, scaling and growing our business. The first I remember one of the other (laughs) things we talked about, sorry, we talked about, um, other things. No, that's okay. So to wrap up the, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, like other, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to wrap this. (laughs) I'm just going to wrap this part up. So the first thing we consider, um, like a pivotal key moment in our business that has taken us or helped us grow and scale is investing as ourself. Again, whether that is listening to a podcast, reading a book, an online course or an in-person retreat. Every time we have put money into ourselves and our business, we have seen the ROI to get us to the next level. The second thing I want to talk about, and I know we've had kind of a podcast on this, but I really believe that outsourcing was a pivotal thing for me that helped me take my business to the next level. So I still want to dive into outsourcing, especially in case someone is watching this webinar and didn't catch our podcast episode on it. Um, so maybe you want to kick off outsourcing first, and then I can talk about how I've outsourced or we'll have conversation around that. Well, yeah, I'll start first. Um, the first time I even knew people outsourced was at Rural Rooted. And I was like, I, I've been doing my Pinterest and it drives so much traffic to my blog, but I don't understand Pinterest. Like, I wish I was better utilizing it. And you were like, oh, I outsource Pinterest. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, this is a thing. Um, and so I started outsourcing my Pinterest. Uh, after that, I started outsourcing. Um, I did hire someone in January to start helping me with newsletters and um, sharing like multiple posts. Like basically when I shared to Instagram, she would collect them and share it also to Facebook, LinkedIn, like all the platforms just to make my life a little easier. So it's all my original content, but then she would just share it out. Um, and then I also outsourced someone helping me, uh, write my blogs, which actually was the same person as my Pinterest, which was amazingly great synergy because Pinterest and blogging go so hand in hand. So she would help me with my blogs, like make sure they were SEO properly, had great graphics, great photos, Um, and just those like few things made a huge difference. Um, the biggest, actually, before I got to rural rooted though, I forgot I was outsourcing bookkeeping. I have outsourced bookkeeping since, I don't know, maybe like November of 2020 or something. Like it's been a while that I've been outsourcing that and it has been extremely valuable. It, my books were not where they should be. I wasn't getting the information I needed. I just it was a huge waste of my time for me to try to learn like QuickBooks uh, whenever our person can just do it so much better, so much faster and just give me more information than I ever could have. So that's another one that I highly, highly recommend. I think for me, outsourcing comes down to what you said about like investing in yourself that like there is no price for like doing it all on your own. And for me, that's the same thing I see with outsourcing. Like there is no price for being a martyr and staying up till midnight invoicing or, you know, like putting the kids to bed or between naps or like whatever, like, yes, we all hustled at the beginning, but like to carry on that state of exhaustion and, uh, workload, um, just isn't worth it. And I know if anyone is listening to this, I guarantee you probably heard this, but I guess maybe not. 
Um, but the whole point of outsourcing is to take things off your plate that can either be, you know, like replicated or you don't need to be there so that you can spend your time doing the things that actually drive your business forward. And I think because I did do that, I took things off my plate. I didn't want to do like, you know, learn Pinterest. Um, I consider my photographer and outsourcing because lots of people like self shoot and edit. Um, and that's not how I want to be spending my time. I'd rather send out another pitch letter or like, you know, do something again, that moves my business forward in a different way. Um, you know, that, that is my skill. And, um, and also like, I think there's a point where we also have to like be happy in our businesses. And so outsourcing like lends itself to that. Um, and so, yeah, I think if you are being like, again, just like the same thing, if you're picking the proper ways to invest in yourself, you know, attending the right retreats and networking with the right people, it's kind of the same thing with outsourcing. If you are truly outsourcing the things that don't matter, like, um, so I outsource my Pinterest, I outsource part of my newsletter, I outsource my bookkeeping um, and for Elevate, we are outsourcing quite a bit with our podcast, like sending emails to invite guests on, like things that aren't required of us. Um, you know, whether it's us sending an email or someone else is not gonna make a difference. Um, and so those are things that we've been able to take off and in order to show up in our business in a different way, whether that's maybe recording another podcast so we can now have two episodes per week where then we have more downloads and we're seen. And like, so I just, um, I know again, it's hard because what the two things that Tara and I have been talking about right now to take your business to the next level require money into your business. Um, but I said this before and I'll die on this hill that like, I think people have a misconception that social media business doesn't require, you know, input to it in the way a brick and mortar or a typical, um, you know, business startup business that we think of in America, um, does. And that's not true. Like, I use this um, example all the time, but you, you don't start a business and not buy, you know, nice dinnerware um, and, you know, just get away with like, bring your own dinnerware or, you know, like we have throw away because we don't want to spend the money in the China right now until we know for sure if our business is going to take off. And I feel like that's what people do with social media. They're like, well, I'm not going to spend any money on it until I know I can make money from my page or until I get my first speaking gig or all this stuff. And it's like every other business in America that you start up you're usually majorly in debt. Like you've taken out something to buy the, buy the location, invest in everything that you need in it and hire the employees, all the things. And for some reason with social media, we're like, we're not spending a dime into it until it gives us all of this money. And I just don't think that's the right mindset. I think that proof from myself and personally speaking again, I know it's hard because there's a lot of people listening right now. They're like that. I know that finances are um, a valid concern and a constraint. Um, but I will say that every time I've spent, I've never spent money where I have in my business, where I have regretted it yet. Um, and, and I do think there are bad business investments, but I think if you're being smart about how you're investing your money into your social media business, your online business, um, then I do believe it takes you to the next level. Um, yeah. And I think like for the bookkeeping thing, one of like, I just think we get really prideful and like, Oh, like it, like we have to do it ourselves. We've got to do it all. We've got to hustle. But like for the booking, for example, it was probably taking me three times as long to do half as good of a job as Mary, our bookkeeper. And so those that three times as long, and I can instead being, especially being that like my, I am like the face or whatever, like behind my brand. So if I want to go to a speaking engagement, like I can't outsource speaking engagement. I can't outsource like me writing like my captions and meaningful, you know, information that I want to share, but like bookkeeping is something. So you can be really strategic about not giving up part of yourself. Like I was recently talking to someone that wanted, uh, needed some help with like outsourcing something. And they were like, again, they're the face of their business. But I was like, can you outsource video editing? Like there's gotta be someone that can video edit better than you. Like think about that. Like who can do the job better than you can um, and, and then outsource that without you losing your creative control. And you actually like you as the visionary behind the business don't lose that like vision, creative content creator. Yep. Okay, anything else you want to talk about with outsourcing then? Or we One can... other thing, just because we're women and I feel like we always get this question. I like to oh, share yeah. that I outsource housekeeping. I know I always talk about, it, I probably sound like a broken record, but I just think like as women, we think we have to like do it all like in our home. So one of the things I outsource and I like seriously considered a business expense is getting my house cleaned because especially with traveling for speaking engagements, I'm like gone so many days a week. And when I come back, I really want to be able to spend the weekends with my kids, not cleaning my house. So that is something I've also chosen to outsource. Yeah. And, um, I, I thought you were going to mention childcare because I think a oh, lot yeah. of people aren't aware 
of that. But um, both you and I mean, I have a sitter watch my kids three days a week. Um, and I, I mean, it's really hard to like structure. I don't have it. I mean, some people might, I just am not good about having like a structured social media business at home, like working direct hours. Um, so I don't like work, you know, eight to five every day that those three days, the kids are gone. But um, I usually try and spend um, either two days on my business and then one day with like Luke um, with no, you know, no phone, just us, no kids. Um, and, or maybe it's like, some of the times it's like half a day's business and the half a day's where like Luke and I get to spend time together. And kind of like you said, I have actually considered, um, and back to my comment about we can outsource just for happiness. Um, a lot of people are like, how does, you know, when you have your phone out all the time and when you're starting a business, I feel like you're hustling. Like, like when we were launching Elevate, Luke was so tired of me working on Elevate. Um, and so I think it's okay just to outsource to have like that, that time with my spouse where I'm not working on my business because I have now outsourcing. That's what made me think of it when I was like, I outsource my bookkeeping because I was spending so many time with all my brand partnerships that have to follow up and be like, was it collected? Was it paid? And like, I was spending so much time in my inbox. And now because I outsource that, I can go on a ranger ride and check cows with Luke and just like spend time with him instead of in my, in my email box. So, I mean, yes, you want to outsource so that you can like, fund and, you know, spend time on, like you said, getting other speaking engagements, doing things that move the needle in your business. But a part of the times I also outsource so that I can like have quality time in my life. So you can live your life. How yes. dare you? I know. <laughs> live in life. Live in life <laughs> yeah. So I, I agree with all of that. I do think I get childcare probably three days a week. Um, about roughly, I mean, sometimes more, sometimes less, but, um, it, yeah, it, sometimes it's just to be able to like be sane, have a minute with my husband, like sometimes we'll schedule like a lunch date during that time. So at least then we won't go on like a Friday night date because we had a lunch date in the middle of our work week. And I find it so helpful and so necessary. Um, so I guess that's kind of like wraps up outsourcing. Yep. Uh, what was our third one? Did we, <laughs> did we figure out what our third one we wrote down is? Yeah, well, I, I can talk about what I considered helpful, but you said you remembered something in the middle of. Talk I did. Well, we didn't actually, you mentioned this at the end of outsourcing, but one or not outsourcing, sorry, scaling, growing our business, like by investing in ourselves. Um, you talked about it briefly, but books and podcasts are like oh. free or close to free things that you can really use to like grow and scale your business. Natalie and yeah, I, I know a ton of podcasts. Girls, I know two girls that have a really good podcast in <laughs> yeah. <Girl> Elevate. <laughs> oh yeah. I might know that. I think Elevate the podcast um, is really great, but that is like free information. Like you can go like Jenna Kutcher is amazing at marketing. Like you can go and listen to her information for free. Like that's such a cool tool. Yeah. Um, I, people always ask me like, where did you, where do you get all this information? I'm like, I am, it's not healthy, but I'm like, I'm listening to probably two to three podcasts every single day. Like I, um, I wake up and like, listen to one while I make my bed. And then usually if the kids keep um, sleeping, I'll like have one or two that I listen to while I'm like um, empty the dishwasher and like doing all the other stuff. And like, I'm not joking. I listen to podcasts all the time. Um, yeah, you're a podcast junkie. Luke and I have discussed it. <laughs> so the third thing that I consider has helped me. And I think if you're doing it strategically, I think there's, um, you have to be doing it right because it can either put you on a hamster wheel of like burnout um, and constant content creation and just like slaves to, you know, platforms. Um, but if you're doing it right, I think you can leverage, um, multiple platforms to help you grow, um, your business. So essentially, instead of like picking what, what I'm getting at is like, instead of just picking one platform, Instagram, and like trying to dive totally into it and grow there, it's like, you can strategically, um, you know, pick another platform and kind of like cross promote or like, you know, use another platform to really get your name out there. And when you're big on there, cross promote to the other one you're trying to grow. Um, and I do think that that has helped me, um, like with the YouTube and the Instagram, they're different audiences, but I do still think that, um, like having a presence on both of them has helped take my business to the next level. I think brands were interested in me because I was in multiple places. I think, um, you know, my name was out on different platforms instead of just being in one place. And so, like I said, you have to do it right because if you're trying to show up everywhere all at once, you're going to get a lot of horizontal growth and not a lot of vertical. Um, but I do think, um, I know the more conversations I have with people that are really monetizing social media well, um, they have like nailed down one platform. And then I feel like strategically funneled their followers to other ones to help monetize in different ways. 
Um, and so that's something I've been picking up on recently that I also didn't realize that I had done earlier on. And I think even with us, like, I think our podcast has helped us with the online course. And so being really strategic about where you're showing up and, and kind of, um, creating like a follower journey almost where they can find value in you in different places. I do think that that, um, is a key thing to our social media businesses. Um, yeah. I mean, we're only like, what, a little over halfway through our podcast, but I, I'm hoping we look back even more so. I mean, I already think it was a great idea to go ahead and carry a lot of the content. We were already creating other places for like Elevate the Course um, and take it over to our podcast. But I am excited to see even in the next six months where that continues to grow and how it changes like our social sharing. Um, I will also say outside of like the social sharing space, like uh, for me, it was speaking engagements were kind of like my next platform. Um, and so yeah. I took a stand like on Instagram about things. My blog was part of that. My blog was obviously the first thing I did in Instagram for, was second for me. And it just diversified. I was able to charge brands a little more to be able to have uh, share about them on my blog and my Instagram. And I felt like having a blog kind of gave me a place to really like dive deeper into topics and then carrying that over to speaking. It's so nice to be able to write a caption on Instagram and see like what hits and what doesn't like what resonates with people. It's almost like you're testing out key messages that are going to ultimately be in your speech um, through Instagram. And so I think that's helped me scale my speaking a ton is obviously like, I would not be speaking on stages if it wasn't for starting with Instagram first and then growing my business up to speak. Yeah. And kind of, this is a little bit of a piggyback off what you said, but I'll never forget when, um, the, what we were talking with a, a conference retention, we were talking to another guy there that has, was actually a speaker. And he was like, yeah, I would have, um, like, I obviously got paid to do this. He's like, but I, I will strategically take certain speaking events and for a lower amount, um, just to get me in front of the room of the people that I know were in there. So like he, like you said, he's using almost the speaking as a another platform to bring in more, um, businesses, but he's being strategic about like that platform and how he's, he's using it. Um, and shoot, there's one more oh. that I wanted to talk to talk about. Um, oh, I had listened to a speaker the other day. Um, and he was, um, I noticed that he was strategic, strategically, um, through his speaking on stage, he was promoting his podcast. Um, and he was promoting um, a clothing line he had and something else too. So again, being strategic about um, using different platforms. I know that's like the stage and a little plat literal platform, but um, I think that, um, I just think there's something about uh, using other platforms to, to help elevate other ones. So like a lot of TikTok people, you'll notice they're funneling to YouTube or Facebook um, to monetize in both of those places. Um, a lot of Instagram, they'll also be present on YouTube. And I do think I've mentioned this before, but I think there's, um, it's really smart to pick a, a long-term platform and a short-term one. So long-term evergreen would be like podcasting YouTube or, um, blog blogging. Yeah. Cause they'll make money for you. Like you can make money from something that went up five years ago. Um, whereas Instagram and TikTok are short. So I wouldn't strategically try to go back and forth between Instagram and TikTok probably, but I do think there's something about monetizing and taking yourself to the next level, like using the long-term and the short-term platform together. Yeah, that um, you said something earlier about the podcast that reminded me of this too. Something that we strategically did um, like was we went on a lot of podcasts when our podcast launched. Mm -hmm. So promoted ourselves on other podcasts. And I feel like it's kind of similar across other, like lots of other platforms. If someone, like if you can do a collaboration with someone on Instagram or wherever that you can get cross like promotion, it's always valuable. And especially with podcasts, like if you listen to pod, if you're listening to a podcast, chances are you're more likely to go and listen to that other person's podcast, the guest podcast. Um, so definitely being able to like promote yourself within an, like a certain platform and with outside of it. We keep saying strategically. I wonder if we should have categorized this as like being strategic and intent, like showing up with intent to the app, maybe instead of what we titled it, but Hopefully you guys get the gist of what we're talking about. I mean, there is, I think there's a lot more strategy that goes behind scaling and growing your business like online. Like you said, I think it's so many times people don't see social sharing as a legit business. Like you would obviously be strategic about picking your location for your restaurant. Like if you were like, I'm going to be out in the boondocks or I'm going to be like on main street, like you're obviously going to pick the best location. I don't know why people don't think of sh social sharing in the same space. It's literally like an online location where you're going to show up like really think about which one's the best fit for you. 
how to do more than one. Like if you're a restaurant, you might consider doing Uber Eats and, you know, having things delivered, or maybe that's not the right strategy for you. Like it's literally the same thing about just being super strategic about what you do and why you do it. And not just like, okay, I think today, like Facebook sounds like a great idea. And like tomorrow, maybe TikTok, like it needs to be like a thought process behind why you're doing what you're doing. And it can change. Like, we're not saying like you have to pick one and stay there forever, but I just think that like, there needs to be some intention behind whatever apps you're choosing to use. Yeah. So I like recalling this one, um, you know, being strategic and showing up with intent. Um, and I think we're getting off a little topic, but I do want to say this and then we'll wrap it up um, because you said it can change. And I think that that is, um, I guess I don't know why I want to hit on it, but if you do look at Tarnice businesses from the start of our social media journey to now, they have absolutely 100% pivoted and we don't, I don't regret anything I've started um, or, you know, pivoted away from. And so, um, yeah, I think maybe if there's someone listening, I know this is outside of what we're talking about, but maybe you needed to hear that. So we're touching on it. Yeah, that was good. Um, I was going to say one other thing again. That's like, kind yeah, of that, was, that was good. Thanks <laughs> that for was good. That. <laughs> You're going to think this one's also annoying. So that's fine. Um, is be, picking your app for what you want to do like where you want to head, what you want to do. So I'm going to give my LinkedIn plug, but I feel like LinkedIn's a really good place to get speaking engagement. So like, that's why I choose to use LinkedIn. Like, what are you trying to get out of something? Like, do you want to do brand partnerships? Instagram is a great place for that. Do you want to get paid by the app? YouTube is a great place for that. Like, what do you want? How do you want your business to make money and then be there to be able to make money? Well, yeah, that falls under like strategy. So I think that's good. Okay, good. Cool. Um, okay. Well, that's been 40 minutes of us rambling, so we should probably wrap it up. Um, next month, what's our webinar on is next month is July. Yes. Next yeah, month so we have a, such we have a great, great guest speaker. speaker. Um, and we're, we won't announce him. Yeah. Just in case, um, we have to like change or something. Um, but right now he is scheduled. Um, and we're very excited. Um, very, I'm very excited to get He's on. He's literally um, one of my favorite speakers that I've ever heard talk about, like future food, agriculture. He's amazing. So, yeah, we were at a conference with him a month ago or two months ago, and we, I felt like I like stalked him around the. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Tara, I have to meet him. I know. I know. I was like, don't worry. I've actually DM'd with him. So I'll totally introduce <laughs> you because I had seen yeah. him speak already before. So yeah. So stay tuned for that. Cause it's going to be, I think it's gonna be a really good one. And then we have a one, our September one lined up and she's really amazing too. It's a female one. So, um, there'll be a couple guest speaker ones coming up and then maybe it'll just be Tara and I too. We have a couple ideas. Um, if you guys ever have something you want us to talk about in these webinars or someone that you think would be a great person for us to interview, please email us. You can email us at our, you know, like you can DM us on Instagram or, um, find our email on our, um, elevate website and email us. Um, but we have a couple exciting things, um, ideas for fall too, that we're already kicking around for these webinars. So thank you yeah. guys for tuning into them. We, we love doing this with you guys and we hope you find them valuable. And like we said, if there's any way that you think that they could be even more valuable, let us know. And if you are looking for ways to invest in your business, don't forget Elevate the Summit. We're currently taking applications for Elevate the Summit at the end of August. It'll be a two-day retreat that will be small group, 10 people only that we'll be accepting. And we are going to be doing a lot of scaling, strategizing, growing your business. So I hope you guys will apply if you're interested. If you have questions about it, DM one of us. Uh, we're happy to answer any more questions or go check out our website. That was an excellent plug. Good job. High five. <laughs> All right. All right. Bye, See you guys. guys. Next month. Bye. Bye.